All right, so today I want to talk about Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop and how it relates to Infuse or kind of how they are the same and different. Um, I had a commenter bring this up and say, hey, what do you think of the 32-bit workflow for Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop versus Infuse? And so I have played around with it. Um, it's changed quite a bit since I last used it, which was probably like six or seven years ago, maybe even longer than that. And you can now tone it in Adobe Camera Raw. It brings it in and then it flattens it into a 16-bit uh, Photoshop file. So we're gonna work through it and then I'm going to show you kind of what they look like uh, in real time. This is a TIFF that has been spit out by Infuse. I have taken it and I have seven exposures here. Um, I have gone and put on my pre-Infuse um, preset and I have gone in and I have also boosted the exposure quite significantly, uh, 1.4. I shot it a little bit dark, but when you're infusing things uh, and you have so many different files, you can get away with some of the things in the field that may not have gone right or may have slipped. So I boosted it by 1.4 um, and it's in a camera flat profile. I then took these, they're in a stack, blend them and infuse. We are now going to blend them in HDR Pro and see what they do. So we right click this, edit in merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. <clears throat> like I said, I have played around with it and we're gonna talk about some of the things I don't like about it and some of the use cases I think it might work. The whole reason I'm doing this is so that you guys can see um, the reasons I prefer Infuse and you can see why uh, you might be able to use this. And I think that it's, it's pretty cool. It is not as delicate or as uh, subtle as infuse can be on the extreme so the highlights and the shadows it also has a lot of extra steps that you just really don't have to do with infuse the biggest one and, and maybe i'm just missing this the batching does not seem to be as easy or even possible you with infuse all you need to do is stack all your images hit your preset and then hit infuse and you're good to go. And then it just reimports them into Lightroom. It's very, very controlled. This is a lot more hands-on, which is one of the reasons I dislike it. You can see here, we've brought these in and this is what it spits out. You are going to, you can check remove ghosts. Um, it attempts to remove them, it wasn't moving. And this is a big thing also I don't like about it. You cannot have it not automatically align this image. So it will automatically align these images, which means that every single one of your flash photos that you brought in has to be automatically aligned. And it's another step that you have to do. Whereas with Infuse, you don't have the automatically aligned tick box checked. Your photos align up perfectly without having to align anything. So long as you didn't move your tripod. Hey, editor Will here. I'm going to come in and do a quick edit about this. It does seem that if you come into Photoshop and you do not do this through Lightroom, that there is a way to make it not automatically align the layers. You can click Merge to HDR Pro, use files or folder. Um, again, no way to batch it in here, but there is this checkbox where if you do go and choose, like, I don't know, here's a bunch of skies I have, I'll just randomly pick some. Hit OK. You can uncheck this box. I do not know if that applies to the Lightroom one. I have not tried it, but I did want to come point that out, and that is under File, Automate, Merged HDR Pro. It does not look like there is a way to batch process all of these. I still have not found that, but I wanted to do to come and point out that there is a way to turn off the automatic alignment that may apply to Lightroom. I do not know, but again, it is another step and this is a far more like Photoshop workflow than it is a Lightroom one, which Lightroom is a, more of a, a digital asset manager with a raw a processor built into it. Um, but this again is just a, something where I would prefer to be able to do this in Lightroom. And I think it's just kind of might be an oversight by Adobe because you know how they work sometimes. Um, but yeah, just wanted to bring that in there so that you guys see it. All right, let's get back to the video. And it's another step that you have to do in this that I just dislike and it has a more room for error. Auto align is not perfect. No auto setting is. There is no one click solution. As I continually say, anybody who tells you there's one click solution, anything is lying to you. Um, 
but we come up here there's not a whole lot of options all you have is complete toning in in acr which is adobe camera raw so we will tone it there and you do have a lot of headroom it is a 32 bit basically a 32 bit raw file is what it is the problem comes in after this so let's go ahead and tone it we're going to bring up our exposure quite a bit it's really bright let's pull our highs down you can see it responds really well and you can get pretty crazy with these highs um pulling things down pull your whites down a bit we need to add some tone to it so i'm actually going to go to the curves and put a strong contrast on it that brings back quite a bit of contrast it's still a little fuzzy um we're gonna probably pull the blacks down just to add some more to it it feels slightly warm maybe we'll let's see here why don't we pull some shadows down a little bit there we go pull shadows down a bit um, you don't have any profile options. Uh, these are just LUTs that I have in here. Um, they're just color LUTs. We're not gonna use them. I don't use them for real estate or anything like that. They are just for fun. Uh, let's see, a little bit of clarity usually helps like architecture. Yeah, it gives it a little bit of nice, nice crispness to it. Um, let's bring some texture in as well, maybe about seven. Already done the curve, and we just want to mess with the color a little bit. And this is where you you lose a little. Again, this is just like uh, cam. Um, excuse me, infuse because infuse you do lose quite a bit of this because it's a TIFF file. You lose the raw the raw data. And I think we'll probably push like five on the saturation there. Might be a little bit much. Let me pull down to three. Yeah. And I think that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit more on the exposure just to give us a little lightness. And I think we'll, we'll call it there. So here's where the things I like about it end. When you hit OK, you have no option to open this in as a smart object. So as soon as you hit OK, you lose all of this raw adjustability and it just becomes a flattened file basically like a 16-bit jpeg you lose all the data it's not there you can no longer come back and access it now you can use the adjustment layers and again i don't work well with adjustment layers i use them sparingly i think that there are a lot of people that lean very heavily on using adjustment layers a lot of overseas editors use adjustment layers and specifically like gammas and stuff like that to get the windows to work i prefer to use raw files for all of that and have all that raw data because it just responds better and it's it's almost like an artist with a paintbrush that they like right it just works the way that you want it to and if it works the way that you want it to uh, there's nothing wrong with it i want to preface all of this and i should have said this in the beginning uh, anything that i tell you guys here is not law it is not the best way to do it. it is the way that works for me and if something else works for you that does not make me right and you wrong or you right and me wrong it's just what works for you so we'll hit okay and there we go We've got it, let's save it, and then let's go back. Now, I do wanna say, this does look really good. I think this looks good. We've got some color casting issues over here, which we have with Infuse. They don't think they are as extreme. They're, and by extreme, I mean they're not as colorful. This is a, a an issue here that I dislike. So you see how this kind of looks almost too like burnt, basically, and we have a lot of aberrations around this. We have some purple fringing here, purple fringing here. Now we could have gone in and, and taken some of that stuff out, but I wanna show you, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanna show you what it looks like in a one-to-one -one comparison. So let's take that, we'll save this. We'll, we'll not close it, we'll come back in here. Now we've got it, let me mark it so we know which one it is. Now let's go to our infuse file. And let's play a little bit with the infuse file because we, we toned this one. Let's tone our infuse file. We'll have it load up. Typically what I like to do Keep everything in the middle. Now notice, this file came out with everything in the middle already. Just about. Infuse is very good about that. If you feed it really neutral things, it will spit out very neutral stuff. Um, let me grab this. It feels a little dark up on the top. I love radial gradients. They are one of the best things um, you can use, I think. And we're just going to boost that up until I feel like it's nice and bright. We're going to keep pulling that too, just a little bit. Make it nice and big. There we go. Just like that. That actually feels a little too bright. Let me go and turn that down. Yeah, we're at one. Let's do one, just like one stop. Maybe even less than that. There we go. 2.9. Okay. 
And that should be good there. Let's go to our tone curve. Let's drop a strong contrast on it like our other one. And uh, let's do a little bit of clarity maybe. Maybe like, I don't know, it doesn't need a whole lot. We'll do five clarity and let's do a little bit. Let's pull back like minus two. I don't know, maybe minus one, it's not terrible. Yeah, and I think that is fairly good. We might need just a little bit of shadow push. There we go, let's do it right there. Okay, so then we have our two files. Let's go and look at them in the library here. Boop. So this is our 32-bit file, and this is our infuse file. Now you can see that the bright areas of this one seem to be a little bit brighter. I didn't drag a radial out on it, but you can just see there are some differences for sure. And you see it shifting when I move. That's what I'm talking about with the auto align. It shifts the image slightly. So it looks like it's moving it slightly over to the right. Uh, there's also quite a bit more texture in this one. And you could, you could do that in here, right? Like we could go in and put a little bit more texture onto the sky. Excuse me, that's not detail. Oh, also there is no sharpening applied to the sky. So let's do that as well. What in the world is happening? Oh, I'm doing it to the wrong one. Look at that. See, this is why you always gotta pay attention. Um, we'll reset that. We don't wanna mess with that guy. We already did. We want this one. There we go. So as you can see, and I was wrong, it's the infuse file that has all the texture in it. So there's another thing that you get a lot less detail and texture and and I'm sure you can pull it out, right? I'm sure you can. But the problem that I have with it is Infuse comes ready to use, right? Right out of the box. I find that the files are so much better to use. They're so much nicer. Look at this like super blue, super blue color casting. We come back to our Infuse file. Yeah, they're a little darker, but they're, le they're less. They're more white. They're more neutral. And you can take a lot of this stuff out. And also if I need to get, grab my flash, you can just grab your flash files, Alt P E up enter, which is the shortcut to edit in Photoshop is layers. And it's just so much easier. Whereas with this one, I can't, I'm round tripping things. I'm going into Photoshop. I'm doing a lot more steps. And I think that's the biggest difference for me is that I think infuse, honestly, we could probably do like plus two on this guy. Seemed a little green. Infuse just gives me something more out of the box and we can also look and give it a comparison here So we'll let it load that preview and see how it's still a little bit burnt, but there's not all those weird um, Aberrations, right? We don't have a lot of purple fringing uh, It is a little bit more neutral if we open this guy up. You see how much more kind of hazy it is It's so much more intense <clears throat> And I'm sure that you could get it out of it but again you are messing with it a lot more and they're j I just like how infuse works so for me I think that if this is an option that would work for you it could be a great way to do architecture stuff and get there it could be a great way to get more natural looking things twilight photography I did test it in twilights and the skies struggle a little bit if you get um, a bright side right you get a house where it's kind of facing the setting sun half of it is and the sky's a little bit too bright it does band quite a bit even though it is 32 bit um, it just struggles with blending those really well in a nice way but you could replace the sky and it's a very fast way to get good results I don't think Infuse works very well for exteriors. I have never found, and maybe you need to mess with a lot of the things, but I've never found Infuse to be great for exteriors. That's just a me thing. But that's what I think of the 32-bit workflow. And you guys have seen kind of what we've got here. I like the Infuse file better. You guys make a decision for yourself and see what you think. For me, the Infuse file just works with my workflow. So Another reason I think that Infuse is one of the best plugins that you can get for doing all this stuff because we haven't even done a flash file, right? This was, you could have preset all of this and been done in just a few minutes. I like that I can batch it and I can go grab a coffee and come back and boom, preset everything. And honestly, for this remodel client, I don't think they would notice anything. Like again, I don't like the color casting and stuff and I do take that out for these guys, but I don't think they'd care. For a lot of clients, they just want something that is really, really nice, really subtle. It's clear, it's in focus, has nice color, and it just doesn't look, you know, kind of 
garbage where it's been pushed too much and there's it's almost too bright and too dark if that makes sense so it's up to you guys what you think but this is what i would go with so thank you guys for watching i appreciate it uh got a lot more coming and i will see you guys on the next one